Hi everyone. So in this video I wanted to pick up where we left off and talk about ROS services. So services are basically ROS's version of a remote procedure call system. And uh, what this means is that uh, you're basically exposing a function that's implemented by a server and allowing uh, different clients to call this function. So um, let's say uh, we have a robot here and it has a node called robot state that's running this is running on the robot and it knows about the robot's state uh, using its low-level access to the robot motor controllers and so on um, and then you have another node which is called remote control and this could just be running on someone's laptop you know maybe this person is at home or something like that and they're not uh, they don't have access to the low-level uh, physical robot and so what they can do is that the robot can implement a service what's called get gripper state and this will just tell uh, tell us whether the gripper is open or closed on this robot um, so then the remote control node can call get gripper state it has to fill out a request which is basically kind of like the arguments to this function and then the robot state will get the request and it will compute the response it'll tell us open or closed and it will send the response back to uh, the remote control node and this is kind of like the return value of the function so a node can implement uh, one or more services at the same time we would call this the server and then um, once a node implements services any node will be able to see that service and be able to call it and so you would call that a client. Um, an important thing to know about services is that a service call is blocking so that means that the client uh, when it calls a service it's going to have to wait for the server to finish all the computation and then send back the response and while it's waiting it can't do anything else so it can't even process subscriptions for example if it's subscribed to a topic um, and so it's for this reason that um, if you're going to do some sort of long-running task, you should use a ROS action instead. So an example of a long-running task might be um, if you want to tell the robot to navigate somewhere. That might take, you know, a minute or so. So you definitely want to use a ROS action for that, which will be a topic for another video. Okay, um, so as we mentioned, uh, we need a way to create request and response messages. So to do that, you define a .srv file. It's very much like a ROS message, except you're defining two messages at once in the same file, uh, a request message and a response message. And so this is a very simple example of a .srv file. Your request uh, message is at the top, and this is exactly the same as a ROS message. And then there's a dash, dash, dash. These three dashes separates the request message on top from the response message on bottom. Um, so ROS has a couple of command line tools that are very useful for working with services. The first one is ROS service list. This will tell you, um, this will give you a list of all the services that are available. Um, so service names look uh, just like topic names, there's a, a leading slash and then like alphanumeric characters or an underscore and possibly more slashes as well. Um, so if you want to get some more information about a service, you can call ROS service info and then the name of the service. And this will tell you the node that offers the service and it will tell you the type of the service. Uh, so skipping down to the bottom, uh, service types will look kind of like this. The first part is the name of the package in which the .srv file uh, resides. And then there's a slash, and then the name of the service message, um, which again comes from the .srv file. It's the same as the name of your, your uh, service file. 
So if you call raw service show on the service type, it will print to the console um, essentially a representation of what was in the .srv file. You'll see exactly what the request is supposed to look like and what the response is supposed to look like. Um, lastly, um, raw service call. Um, this gives you a way to call a service without writing any code. You can just call a service directly from the command line. And what you do is that you just say raw service call and then the name of the service. And then here I would normally just hit tab twice to get the tab completion, but you need to specify the arguments to the, uh, you need to specify the request message um, in YAML form. So that can be uh, a bit difficult. Um, I, I can never remember exactly what the syntax is. Um, so if you just hit tab tab, um, you'll get an auto-completed version with all zero values. Um, unfortunately, when you have a request message that's very uh, complicated, this becomes uh, very cumbersome to use. And so in that case, um, I would probably just write a small Python program that calls the service um, and that way I have um, full control over all the parameters that I'm entering. Another thing that's uh, kind of missing, unfortunately, from uh, services is that there's no uh, ROS service echo. So if you remember, um, there's a command called ROS topic echo that allows you to see all the messages that are being published to a topic. Um, and unfortunately, um, there's no similar thing for ROS service where you can sort of eavesdrop on what services are being called, uh, what the responses are, and so on. I think that would be very useful for debugging, but unfortunately it doesn't exist. Um, okay, so let's talk about when to use services. So um, in many cases, you'll find um, you can just write a library function and then have your nodes call that library function. There's really no need to create a service um, a, lot, a lot of the time. Um, so for example, if you are just gonna write a service that does a bit of math, right? there's no reason that needs to be a service. That could just be a function, and then your code can call that. So I would encourage you before writing a service to think about whether um, a library function could do the same thing for you. Um, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that um, your services are only being used for quick operations. And so if you're going to do something that's going to take a bit of time, you should use actions instead. Um, this even includes uh, things that are relatively quick, so like opening or, or and closing a gripper. That's something that might only take a second, half a second, but I would still say it's better to use an action for that, since even that is kind of a long time uh, in computer time. So one of the main reasons I would use a service is for C++ and Python interoperability. So basically, um, let's say you're writing your program primarily in Python, but then there's just like some thing that you, uh, that's only available in C++ that you need. Uh, so in that case, what you could do is that you could write a C++ node that uh, does that thing. Maybe it's like some sort of open CV uh, function or something like that. And then that C++ code can offer a service uh, back to your Python code. So now your Python code can call that service and you're able to just do a little bit of your program in C++ while keeping the rest of it in Python. You can also do this uh, vice versa, of course. Um, and then another example would be when you have one computer that's connected to real hardware or some sort of real physical resource. So this is like the example we had before where we have a node that's running on the real robot and then we have some remote control nodes that are elsewhere. And the remote control nodes need a service in order to be able to access uh, low level data from the robot. All right, so um, to get into the specifics of how to actually write a service, we'll uh, jump into a project to write some code in both C++ and Python. Um, I wanted to keep it very simple. So uh, what I propose to do is that 
we'll write two services, one called get distance and one called get closest. And uh, we're going back to our TurtleBot example with the same um, landmarks that we used in the previous videos. And get distance will essentially be a service that takes in the name of a landmark, like cylinder, and it will return the distance to the landmark uh, from the robot. And then get closest will just take in nothing, and it will return the name of the closest landmark. So in this case, uh, it would return cube as the closest to the robot. Hi everyone, so this is the coding portion. In this video, we're going to create our service message and uh, we'll start also the package that will implement our service. So we're making two packages. Um, it's been a while since I've made one of these videos, so I've changed my setup a little bit. So I hope you guys will bear with me. Um, so the first thing is that I'm now using ROS Kinetic instead of Indigo. And I've also upgraded my version of Ubuntu to 1604. And uh, I've installed some uh, Vim utilities and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Uh, all the stuff that we're going to talk about doesn't really uh, change or make a difference between different versions of ROS. Um, so I've also started from a blank slate here. So I'm going to go ahead and just get things set up. All right, so uh, first I'm going to create a package that's just for our messages. So to do that, I'll do catkin create packages. And I'm going to name it tbot after turtlebot. And it's going to have this uh, messages suffix to it. So this is a pretty common suffix that you'll use. Um, this is just to create a package that, um, that contains only message definitions, service definitions, and action definitions. And the reason why you want to create a separate package uh, like this that has no other code in it is that it makes it easier for uh, other people uh, to depend on your topic or your service or your action. Um, so they don't need to bring in all of your code, they just need to bring in your messages package. So go ahead and, oops, uh, and create package tbot. All right, so uh, when you create a mess, uh, service, uh, that'll be in the .srv folder. Actually, it's, it's informative to look at the CMake list here. Um, if you look in the CMake list, there's this very long uh, comment block that explains um, in detail how exactly to uh, declare your messages, your services, your actions. So. Um, so you can read this in more detail, especially if you're writing a more uh, complicated uh, service. In this case, our, our service is pretty simple, um, but we will follow these instructions anyway. So uh, first it says in package.xml, we need to have a build depend for message generation, and we need an exec depend for message runtime. So let's go ahead and do that first. This is the auto-generated um, uh, package.xml. So we need to build depend for message generation. And then we need an exec depend for message runtime. Okay. Let's go back to CMake lists. Um, and then this is just saying that if you depend on other messages, uh, if your message contains other message types, then you'll need to also add. Um, you'll need to add a dependency on, on that as well. Similarly, you need to do that in this file, CMake lists. So first we need to add uh, message generation to the top where it says find package catkin. So go ahead and do that here, message generation. Um, then it says we need to add message runtime to this catkin package command. Um, so that's uh, down here, catkin package. So uh, I believe it needs to go under catkin, under catkin depends. So we'll do that. Go ahead and uncomment that and add message runtime here. 
Okay. Um, then, um, if you aren't creating any messages, then we don't need to we don't need to uncomment this. Um, so all we need to do is uncomment add service files, and we also need to uncomment generate messages. And then, since we don't depend on anything, we're not going to use standard messages. For example, we can just delete that. And our two message types will be called get closest dot service and get distance dot service. And uh, they'll have to be in this uh, SRV folder. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I've already created an SRV folder. So let's start with get closest um, dot SRV. So get closest actually um, doesn't take in any input. It just tells you what the closest landmark is. So um, if if there are no arguments to your request, then you just put nothing nothing there, and you can just use a three dashes. Remember that these three dashes delineate the um, the request the request which would normally go up here, and then the response message which goes down here. So since there's nothing in the request, we can just leave that empty. It's a good idea to um, carefully document all of your messages and services since they they form kind of like a contract or an interface for people who use your your topics or your uh, your services. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Get distance uh, does take in uh, a request argument, um, so that would be the name of the landmark, and then the um, result will be the distance. Um, so let's see. I think. We can also look up, if you look at Ross messages, um, you'll see uh, you can refer to this as reference when you're deciding what types are appropriate for your service. So we've created the uh, messages. Let's try to build this now and see what happens. All right, so uh, it built. Uh, nothing too exciting. Um, we can take a look at the generated code for this. Um, normally you wouldn't have to do this, but if you look in your uh, devel folder, uh, so the C++ will be in include uh, tbot messages, and you can see that it created um, three files for each uh, service. So there's like a generic one that defines the service, then there's uh, separate messages for the request and response. Um, you don't really have to look at them. Um, you just have to know that they exist. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, similarly for Python, Python will be located in devel lib, Python uh, dist packages, and then the name of your package. Um, and here they, uh, here it'll be inside this uh, SRV, the service module. And um, again, you can look at these, but you won't really need to to know about it, but here's where the actual message is defined. Now let's go ahead and start. Uh, we'll, we'll create a package that's called tbot, and this is where we'll actually implement the service for both uh, the C++ and Python versions. Uh, oops, uh, this is catkin depths. This is, uh, this is just something that I, I try to remember offhand, um, but of course you can always um, look at Catkin tools and use this for reference um, if you want to remember what all the commands are exactly. All right, so now we have our tbot package. We'll use this uh, for both the C++ and Python versions. I'll start with C++ and then move on to Python.